Now, to start our program this afternoon, I'm thrilled to moderate the next session on the power of the continent's creative economy, which, as you just saw in the video that just played, um, the power of the influence, the world, um, how the, the, the creative industry can influence the world um, nowadays, especially in Africa. Uh, I'm going to introduce my panelists now. I know most of them speak English, but I'm going to do it in French. Are you guys ready? I'm no, I, I know they're going to understand. Je vous demande, s'il vous plaît, mesdames et messieurs, d'accueillir une actrice, une humanitaire, humanitarienne et ambassadrice de Global Citizen. Elle est productrice, elle est activiste et son nom, c'est Nomza Mombata. Est-ce que vous pouvez faire du bruit, s'il vous plaît, pour Nomza Mombata? She's looking gorgeous. Hello, de rien. <laughs> Our second panelist um, was here last night. For all the people that were here, you were able to witness her here on stage. She is an author, autrice, compositrice, interprète. Elle nous vient du Nigeria via Toronto. Et elle s'appelle Falana. Mesdames et messieurs, faites du bruit pour Falana. <laughs> and she also looks very beautiful. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Notre prochain intervenant. Uh, est un, le directeur exécutif du Center for Music Ecosystem. C'est un passionné de musique, mais c'est aussi un passionné des gens. Et il a, je pense, un annonce, une annonce spéciale à nous faire uh, ce soir. Est-ce que vous pouvez faire du bruit, s'il vous plaît, pour Shane Shapiro Hi Shane Et pour terminer, j'aimerais inviter sur scène un frère, un mentor, un passionné de musique et un passionné de la jeunesse africaine. C'est le directeur général de Universal Music Africa, mesdames et messieurs, Franck Kaku. On peut continuer à les applaudir jusqu'à ce qu'ils a... regagnent leur siège, s'il vous plaît. Thank you so much. All right. Okay, so we're gonna dive right in with uh, Falana. Falana, I have uh, a question for you. Uh, and before that, you performed for us last night. Who was here yes. last night for Falana's performance? <laughs> That's right, can we make some noise for the sensational Falana? <laughs> what an incredible performance that she had. She did for us last night. Now, um, the Global Citizen Movement was founded on the principle that music can unite people in a common passion. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience on this? Wow, that's a big question. I think, um, first of all, thank you so much. And thank you to everyone. And thank you to Global Citizen for having me. It was a pleasure. Um, for me, I think Nina Simone said um, an artist's responsibility is to reflect the times. And she understood the power of using your creativity to impact change, to unite people across languages, across borders. So I think as artists, we have a very powerful responsibility um, to really impact the world, whether it's through dancing and having fun or just you know, raising our voice for important issues. Um, so I don't take that lightly at, at all. And I commend Global Citizen for realizing the power of that and connecting music with advocacy, because we reach so far, you know? So when we are able to pull people in because we reach their hearts through our music and then talk to them about issues that impact us all, it's one of the most powerful ways to do that, so. Yeah. Beautifully said, beautifully said. Now, Nomzamo, you are an actress, but you're also a producer, and you're the producer of the hit series, Shaka Ilembe. Now, this series is not only a creative project, but it's also an opportunity for economic uh, development and job creation. How do you see that Shaka Ilembe um, is contributing um, to these aspects, particularly in the South African film industry? Um, first of all, it's an absolute honor being here. Is this working? Ah, there it is. <laughs> It's such an incredible honor to be here, but also I'm so grateful to Bridgewater and Global Citizen that this particular conversation around the creative economy is happening because it is a very important conversation that we are a part of the economy. We contribute greatly to it. Um, we look at Shaga Ilembe, the series itself in season one, um, we were able to have 10,000 jobs that were created from it. 10,000 jobs. 
Wow. And if you look at that number, 10,000 jobs reflects into how many families, right? In terms of people's employment, people being, um, being there, um, you know, 24 seven. We have, even now when we just finished our season two, we had about 250 to 300 cast and crew on a daily. That's just on a daily. And then people who are constructing the huts, people who are beading every day. And then we have background actors, thousands of background actors, and we continue to keep that number. And hopefully every, every season that we get to do the show, we can be able to increase that 10,000 to even more. Um, I think it's important for us to remind ourselves that that is a contribution into economy, into the economy. It is a contribution into um, why it's so economically viable, right? To have those conversations. You look at music. There's a reason why uh, big companies like Pepsi spend millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars, just to get you know that that one artist, that musician, or even an actor, or somebody who's prominent in that space, to come and promote that kind of product. So. It's really about changing the narrative, and I do think that we need to be able to um, have a different kind of conversation when it comes to the creative economy, that it's not a charitable thing. Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> business. <laughs> That's why it's called show business. And so for me to be able to find the balance in the show and the biz, the show is me as an actress being in front of the camera, the biz is me as an executive producer on different projects and contributing to having those kinds of big conversations on financing, because financing is still a very much a big um, hurdle that we're facing on the continent, um, particularly for film and television, just trying to convince people on, on the business aspect of it, that there's rebates, that there's tax write-offs to this thing, and how you can be able to truly see um, the economic viability of it. Amazing. Thank you so much. Now, I have a question for you both, ladies. Um, Global Citizens' mission is to end poverty worldwide. From your point of view, how can investing in culture help eradicate poverty? Um, I think you said it excellently, creating jobs, creating capacity, capacity building. So I, from my point of view, you know, one of the biggest creators of wealth for artists is touring. And touring is a massive industry in and of itself. There's so much untapped potential on the continent. You know, a lot of artists, it's much easier for us to go abroad and to right. tour. And, but the interesting thing is there's so many artists abroad that want to come, come back and, you know, touch the soil and say, I came to Africa and I toured and I made an impact here. So I think there's so much opportunity there, um, creating uh, the infrastructure. So obviously it's multi-layered, right? So we're talking about not just stadiums, we're talking about roads, we're talking about um, skill building, we're talking about electricity and, you know, energy, right? We t I talked about that yesterday. So all of these different intersections of industry create jobs, you know, distribute wealth, and would obviously contribute to ending poverty or like contribute to giving people financial capacity to support mm. themselves. So, you know, I think the creative industry is a business like any other industry, like tech, yeah. like film, yeah. like, you know, any other industry you think about. So I think this is an excellent untapped opportunity to really have impact globally, especially with, you know, African artists going global. Yes, African artists <laughs> going global. I mean, you speak about, um, touring for artists and global citizen has move africa yeah. mm -hmm. that, that in itself that we're right? going to talk about very yeah, soon move africa when it comes to the resources when it comes to skills development when it comes to job employment as well for young people on the continent when they when we have to host the big conversation of it's a world tour but this beautiful continent is not part of your world tour. Make it make sense, mm -hmm. right? And maybe the conversation is about skills and the conversation is about infrastructure and the conversation is around resources. So how do we invest in those kinds of things? How do we build on that so that we can become um, a hotbed, right, um, that is capable of hosting these? And I think we've always been able to, to, to host. I think we've always been capable of it. But now, how do we stay abreast as well in terms of what are the trends that are happening um, globally? I'm a firm believer in it's okay to seek greener pastures, but you've got to come home and water your pastures. Hmm. Pastures can only stay green if you're coming back and you're saying, this is how Hollywood is doing it. This is how Bollywood is doing. This is how Southeast Asia is doing it. This is their business model. They are hyper-local. One of the biggest conversations that you get when you're in the pitching rooms with the Netflix, they say, 
we want things to win on the continent. If it's not popular in Africa, we will not invest in it. There was one of the biggest shows that they did that was doing well globally, but it didn't do well on the continent, and they didn't renew it for a second season, which was an eye-opener for me. So we've got to stay in those conversations of when the streamers are saying, this is what the database is showing us, right? And data is very important because they're able to follow what are people really interested in? What are Africans interested in? Africans are interested in seeing themselves. We really are. We want to see beautiful stories. We want to see magnetic stories. We want to see epic films and we want to see epic television series that speak to us about us and speak to the lay of the land of who we are. So if we continue to invest in the authenticity of stories in film and television, we continue to cultivate and we continue to grow. But you've got to learn, Bollywood is not trying to look like Hollywood. Bollywood is trying to look like Bollywood. Right. Mm -hmm. Southeast Asian movies are not trying to look yes. like Hollywood. Yes. They're trying to look like themselves. And that's why they're so incredibly successful. And that's why Hollywood knows when they have to sell a Hollywood movie to Bollywood or sell it to Southeast Asian market, it's a tough call for them because they've got to work extra hard how to convince the local market to believe in us. Right. So that's where we need to get when it comes to the creative economy. That's where we need to get when it comes to the kind of stuff that we're producing. And that's why Shaga Ilembe, I mean, sorry, am I, you must stop me if I'm talking too much. <laughs> um, we had big conversations because it's, 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 it's in a native language. It's in Isizulu. It's not in English because it was made for the people on the ground. Yes, yes. And we're just inviting the world to the barbecue. Amazing. We're inviting the world to the barbecue. I love that. And Frank, um, I know that uh, they, they touched on a few questions uh, mm -hmm. on, on building, you know, this industry and, you know, infrastructure. Um, today, we talk about how great African music is and how great of an impact it has, you know, on social media because we have a few artists that are uh, going global, um, as Falana was saying. But how can we go from just talking about it to actually um, creating a profitable industry? Um. I believe a lot of uh, great things have been said already. And um, uh, to transition from showcasing African talents to um, actually investing in infrastructure, um, I think we need to switch and shift our mindset from short-term exposure to long-term um, uh, investment and growth. Of course, uh, the African music has been, um, has demonstrated great ability to um, um, be successful as in creative talent. When you see the genres like Afrobeat, Coupe de Calais from Cote d'Ivoire or Roomba from yeah, DRC, yeah, nobody's yeah. going to discuss that. But to capitalize from that, we need to be able to switch it into production facilities, to um, uh, distribution networks to uh, jobs, to uh, better uh, legal frameworks. So there are three things that could be done uh, to my mind. The first one is investing in nurturing local talents. Last year, 2023, labels have invested globally more than $7 billion in A&R and marketing. So when you look at this, if you come back to Africa, we should be able to do the same and nurture local talents to yeah. help them get more uh, recording studios, um, get more indie or major labels uh, and actors to help them have a more conducive environment um, in order to have, them, to, to have them developed in a better way. So that's the first thing. Another one should be the collaboration between government and the private sector. Of course, this should help um, have Better framework as far as right management, fair compensation for artists and rights holders. Um, and uh, be, I would say, more reinsuring for investors. Once again, so that investors can come and invest in these facilities and infrastructure. And third one, and I know a lot of these governments are aware of that today, and I'm happy to see uh, the Minister of Culture from Cote d'Ivoire being here and, 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 and working towards that is, investment-driven policies. We need to facilitate uh, investors, whether they're local or international, to really um, digest and invest in the local um, markets. And 
this is what happened with the, with the streaming market and streaming platforms. They have been facilitated in some, some way, and we see what it has become in our daily consumption of music. So having a solid foundation should help us have um, a better impact um, in economic growth and, uh, and uh, as far as the, the, the potential music has in, um, in fighting poverty. Amazing, amazing. Now, um, Shane Frank just uh, talked about facilitating, facilitating um, investment. Um, how can we show the impact of, the, of music and the creative economy on communities in a way that meets the results uh, DF, DF, DFIs um, need to invest? Well, the first thing is we need to treat it as an industry, first off. So in most parts, unfortunately, in mo most parts of the, the global south, music is not an industry. Uh, as much as it should be. Music, when I say the word music, it means something different to each and every one of you, right? We all love it, we all experience it, but as a business, the basic foundations and frameworks that we need for it to function as an industry, which is what Frank was talking about, intellectual property regulation and copyright. Remember the word property and forget the word intellectual. It's a song yes. is property, okay? And we need education. We don't just need to teach people how to play instruments, we need to teach people the business, the business. Mm -hmm. around protecting oneself and developing oneself around the instruments. As Frank said, we, as, as everyone said, we need physical infrastructure as well. And it's right, when you're building a stadium, you're not just, or an arena or a music venue or a studio, you're not just building that for music, you're building that for the entire community. That's increasing um, broadband access, for example. That's obviously paving roads and, and providing these types of initiatives. And, the, the challenge that we constantly face is that we, we face this um, issue where there's a lack of translation between how music works and functions as an economy and how we invest in economies. Sure. And in order to change that, we need new language. And that starts with data and that starts with evidence. And if we can start to try to incorporate music and other creative economies into how we talk about development, how we talk about development finance, how we talk about improving livelihoods on the ground, and how we foster economic diversification. Because African creativity is limitless, right? Mm -hmm. We completely limitless. We can mine what's in our heads forever, and it's not going to ruin the world, whether other things that we mine are not limitless. And remember that the creative economy was worth 2% of global GDP in 2019. It's estimated to be worth 4% now, and 10% wow. by 2030. Wow. The music economy grew by 10.2% last year globally, and the fastest growing market in streaming was right here. So what we need is we need to be better translators. That's the goal. And you know, to do that, I'm, uh, I'm excited to announce for the first time here at Global Citizen, with Global Citizen at the Economic Development Association, my organization, Center for Music Ecosystems and Global Citizen, is going to try to address this issue. Wow. And what we're doing is we're gonna be creating the first ever music and creative economy research framework to produce this data and evidence so music and the creative economy can be fully incorporated into development finance. And over yeah. the next 12 months, <laughs> and, and over the next 12 months, we're going to be producing research, policy support and frameworks for any government that wishes to access it Wow. to show how music works, why it matters, how we can invest in it, and why investing it will improve all of our economies everywhere and keep more African money coming from African creativity yeah. in yeah. Africa. Because mm -hmm. that's the most important thing. Yeah. It needs to stay here. It needs to stay in Africa. Please, can you give him another round of applause? Yes. All right, Frank, um, last question uh, mm -hmm. for our panel today. Um, how can we use music and the creative economy as assets to investing on a global market? Well, um, pretty happy Shane just uh, announced that. Uh, pretty exciting with what's, with, with what's um, coming in. Uh, music as part of Africa's soft power um, already contributes to, um, to the generation in various sectors such as tourism, tech, or uh, even media. 
But um, in order to attract la larger scale um, investments such as funding uh, from uh, MDBs, I think that we need standardized metrics and economics. Um, um, three things once again, I believe in comprehensive data. Um, we need to develop comprehensive data, which means that um, <clears throat> how and how much does um, music contributes into job creation, um, IP exports, um, other services such as uh, events and, uh, and merchandising. Um, once we have that particular and specific information, it's easier for it's easier for the governments and other investors to really treat music as an asset. Um, of course, once again, we can align music with key performance indicators, KPIs, um, have them link to youth employments, for instance, to attract uh, more investors. And um, last but not least, we are a continent that has been so creative when it comes to um, uh, music or art in general. Why not use that creativity um, in finance, we can find new financial models. Right. We can think of um, royalty-based loans. We can think of music-based um, based bonds, for instance, in order to try to secure in current investments with future um, revenues coming from the music industry. So um, we're in an era where, of course, data is key, and such studies are going to flip the script, to my mind. Um, and the sooner we treat music as an asset on the continent, the, 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 the bigger our place around the global table will be, the earliest as well. Thank Amazing. You. Now, yes. <laughs> Earlier, uh, uh, Namzamo uh, mentioned Move Africa. Do you wanna, is there something that you want to add to her input on Move Africa? Um, the only thing I could say is... Um, just as being part of that panel um, regarding the, the Economic Development Assembly, um, this initiative, Move Africa, really transpires um, the essence of the creative economy becoming a tool for development. And this is manifested through such initiatives. Remember, Move Africa fights poverty, um, gender equity, so using and being conscious of music becoming a tool to fight these fights and address these topics makes music and the industry as a global tool something that matters. That right. matters and, and we need to help the, the local actors and um, culture, culture ministers and other governments to really be aware of what it represents and the potential it has. Amazing, thank you so much. And I think that you have one last thing that you want to say. First, gonna... first off, this, this project is being supported by Universal Music Group. So I just want to make sure they get a round of applause for their oh, leadership. So you guys are tag I, team. I, I couldn't say it myself, I couldn't say it myself. <laughs> I just, you know, I, I, always, I, I always say, you know, just imagine a world without music. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. Right? Inimaginable. Yeah. Well, but we don't need music to live. We'd all still be alive. Oh, but. Would it be worth living? Maybe, that is same, same with question. film. We need to take it as seriously as we take any other sector. And if we do that, the benefits will be significant for every single country and city around Africa over the next generation. Thank you so much. I think that, you know, with this panel and uh, uh, all the insight that we heard today, we understand the importance of um, investing in the creative industry and how that industry can really boost um, our economies um, on the continent. Thank you uh, to each and every one of our panelists tonight, Thank Mr. You. Frank Kaku, Falana, Namza Mumbata, and Shane Shapiro, that, I'm as that I'll ask you to applaud, please, for the insight. Thank you so, so much.